Costello program. Listen to the great rhythms of Freddie Rich and his orchestra, the swinging singing of Connie Haynes. And that generous, grubby little goblin... Hey! Costello, I've got a big surprise for you. Who do you think is coming over here tonight? Is it Lana Turner? Nope. Well, it's got it? Nope. Betty Graber? Nope. Then I don't care. Oh, Costello. <laughs> I, I'm surprised at you. All you think of is women. Don't you realize that here in Hollywood, pretty girls are a dime a dozen? A dime a dozen? Certainly. And I've been spending my money on jelly beans. Oh. <laughs> and then sometimes I would buy Sirocco. Sirocco? That's licorice spelled backwards. No, talk sense, Costello. Look, I've invited the greatest press agent in town to come here and handle your public relations. Not so fast, Abbott. What do you mean? I'll handle my own relations. I couldn't turn poor old Aunt Minnie over to a stranger, you know. Before I do that, I'd rather send her back to the kennel. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about your relatives. I'm talking about public relations. Now, you're famous for your funny stories, and this man will publicize your anecdotes. He wouldn't dare. Yeah. He hasn't got the nerve. What do you mean? I don't mind being amateurized. Nah, well. But when you're going to start with my antidotes, that's uh, enough, brother. Now, wait a minute. Look. Nobody's look. going to try to make me famous at such now, a look, price. Now, Lou, that'll make you famous. I still have my pride, you know. All right, listen, Costello. My this... amateurization's gone, but I, I know. have pride. Listen, Costello, this man has... <laughs> this man has great contacts with all the picture studios. He knows uh, Cary Grant from RKO Lot. Spencer Tracy from the MGM lot, Humphrey Bogart from the Warner lot. And... Does he know Cockeyed Louis? Uh, where is he from? The parking lot. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> can't be Frank Sinatra. He can't knock that hard. Oh, listen, please. He was here last week. Now, that may be the publicity man. Come in. I beg your pardon. Which one of you is Mr. Costello? I'm Will Costello. Well, I'm so glad I got here in time. I'm Mrs. Crutch, Mr. Costello. And my daughter's very sick. She's got the measles. Oh, that's too bad. Yes, and she listens to your program every week, and I come here to ask you a great favor. What's that? Please don't go on tonight. We want her to get well. <laughs> How do you like that? She gets $40 for that one measly joke. <laughs> Although it's awful loud for a knock. That was last week. I've got to get him in. All, All right. right. Come in. Good evening, Mr. Rabbit. Is this your partner, Mr. Costello? Uh, that's him. <laughs> no, I don't blame him. Certainly you. is. Now, wait a minute, Abbott. Who is this guy? <laughs> that's the uh, publicity man. My name is Needle, but that's not the point. I understand you need a man to handle your business and the publicity. <laughs> Could you give me that again, please? I say my name is Needle, but that's not the point. I understand that you need a man to handle your business and your publicity. Well, I thought... All right, I'll take the job. I certainly talked him into that one, didn't I? <laughs> All right, now let's discuss my salary. Why, a man of my standing must receive a weekly stipend commensurate with my ability. Shall we say $500? What? Thank you. I knew you'd agree to that. I I'll didn't say nothing. Great plan for you, Costello. I have a campaign mapped out for you that will make you... Wait a minute, wait a minute. $500 a week. How can you afford the work so cheap? I do my own laundry. <laughs> well, now that you've signed the contract, we'll get busy with your publicity. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is get you a job at a farm so you can get some action pictures of you working on a farm. And what do I have to do? Very simple, Costello. The first thing you do is you roll out of bed at 4 o'clock in the morning, milk 20 or 30 cows, fetch a few barrels of water from the well, chop down a couple of trees of firewood, feed the chickens, beg the goats, clean out the stables, and zingo, you're ready for breakfast. Could I have an extra bowl of Wheaties? <laughs> Certainly, certainly, my boy. Now, right after breakfast, you overhaul the tractor from plow five or six acres ground, dig a couple of hundred sacks of potatoes, then you run over to the barn, pick a few tons of hay, then skip over to the orchard, pick 50 feet of bushels of apples, uh, create them a sack of shipping, then spread the wagon load of the fertilizer over the onion patch, and zingo, you're ready for lunch. I'll just have a chocolate soda. I don't want to waste any time. <laughs> chocolate soda with no straws. I'll gulp it down. I'm fat. Fine, fine. Now, right after lunch, you get out your shovel, you dig a drain to ditch around the barn, repair all the fences, clean the saddles, churn the butter, thresh the wheat, and spread the potatoes, prune the, prune the trees, trim the hedges, weed the cabbage patch, fill all the land, and bed down the cows, curry the horses, and zingo, you're ready for supper. All I do is eat. <laughs> 
Now, right after supper, you hitch up the buggy, you take the farmer's daughter for a romantic ride in the moonlight. Now, she's gorgeous, captivating, redhead, a little white skin, a ruby lip. You drive down the lane, you're holding a hand of yours, suddenly the horse stops. She moves up closer to you, put your arm around her waist, lift her ruby lip up to yours, and then, you know what to do? Zingo! I'm ready for lunch! <laughs> Costello, this is the man you need. Hey, Abbott, where have you been? Where, where were you when I was working on that farm? I mean, I've never been through so many zingos in my life. Now, now, Costello, Mr. Needle is an honest man. He is? Needle, look me in the eye. Yes, sir. You wouldn't stick me, would you? Of course not. Costello, I'm here to build up your program now. Last week you had Frank Sinatra as your guest. Who have you got on your show this week? Abbott and me. Brother, you're in trouble. <laughs> But we'll let that happen again next week. Everybody, have a great universal fix of The tour and bears are Good night, gentlemen. Did you ever see such a breeze in your life? Hey, isn't what? that wonderful, Costello? Tour and Bay is going to visit us next Thursday. Is that what he said? That's what he said. Oh, Can you hear him? No, no, no. No, he'll be here next Thursday. Oh, he'll be here next Thursday? Yeah, tour and bay. I cut some turkey, don't he? Uh, yeah, that's right. Well, in that case, I'll have to talk turkey to him. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Oh, gobble. quiet, Costello. <laughs> Turin Bay is not a turkey. He's a Turkish gentleman, and he speaks English. He's a linguist. He's uh, familiar with uh, many tongues. He's familiar with lots of tongues? Mm, that's right. He's a linguist. He ain't no linguist. He's a delicate person. No, 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 no. <laughs> tongues are languages. Tongues are languages. That's right. Well, so long, Abbott. Where are you going? I'm going to get a language sandwich on rye bread with mustard. <laughs> Connie Hayden sings, Accentuate the Positive. Gather around me, everybody. Gather around me while I speak some. Feel a sermon coming on me. The topic will be thin, and that's what I again If you want to hear my story Then settle back and just sit tight While I start with you and the attitude of doing right You gotta Negative, latch on to the affirmative. Don't mess with Mister in between. You've got to spread joy up to the maximum. Bring blue down to the minimum. Have the pandemonium liable to walk upon the scene. To illustrate my last remark, Jonah. With that accent, you wear the positive in them. My lips are negative. Let on to the affirmative. Don't mess with Mister in between. You've got. I had no business letting that guy Needle invite Turn Bay over here next week. Why? I don't know nothing about Turkish actors. Well, what do you have to know? The only Turk I know is he, he, he's a Turkish civilian. A Turkish civilian? What's his name? Hassan Ben Drafted. <laughs> 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 
but can't tell us. Surely you've seen uh, to... No. Surely you've seen Torin Bay on the screen. And his lovely leading lady, the Princess Ben Ali. Princess Ben Ali? Yes. His leading lady? Yes. I know a brother, Bolin Ali. Oh, no. <laughs> I, hey, what was that? I am the Princess Ben Ali, Torin Bay's leading lady. Leading lady? Get a look at that pulse. <laughs> he must lead her around by the nose. <laughs> Quiet, Costello. Quiet. <laughs> she may be a she may be a member of his harem. With that kisser, she must be the harem scarum. Quiet. <laughs> My master. We made a picture called Lost in a Harem. I know, I know. Never mind that. Well, we lost. All right. <laughs> My master, Sahib Tarande, has instructed me to prepare you gentlemen for his visit. I have written a play of the Far East, which would put you in the mood to receive the master. Come, let us enter my tent so you may study your part. Abbott, she's been living in the tent so long, she's flat happy. <laughs> well, nevertheless, we're going to do as she says. We can't offend her and her. Come on. Through the courtesy of Turin Bay, we now present a soggy, sagging saga of the Sahara, starring Abbott and Costello and the Princess Ben Ali, entitled, The Two Bedouins, or It's Time to Change the Sheep. <laughs> As the scene opens, we see two footsore and weary Arabs trudging across the desert. Abbott, I can't take... I mean, I can't. <laughs> I can't take... How do you like that, English? <laughs> I can't take another step. The sand is terrible. What are you complaining about? I've got a hole in the side of my shoe and the sand keeps pouring in. Why don't you cut a hole on the other side and let it run out? <laughs> Be quiet, Costello. Hey, look. Here comes a man staggering towards us. Sand! Sand! Sand everywhere! Sand all around me! And I forgot my bucket. <laughs> hey, who are you? Oh, just an old air raid warden. <laughs> we should have saved him for a blackout. Well? We should have saved him for a blackout. I heard it. Somebody's killed. All right. All right. No place for two blackouts. We must hurry, Costello. The lovely Princess Vanelli is being held captive by the wicked Sultan at Bay Ellie Bay. That at Bay Ellie Bay has certainly gone to pop. Quiet. We're approaching the Sultan's tent. Help! Help! Save me! Save me! Castello, that's the voice of the princess. It's coming from this tent. Hello there! Hello there, princess! It's me, your friend, the Rift! Oh, hello, Rift! What do you hear from the raft? Things are pretty rough with the raft! Rift rough! Aye, aye, aye! Aye, aye, aye! Aye, Castello! Hey, it's dark in this... It's dark in this tent, princess. I can hardly see. There she is, Abbott. Boy, she sure has gotten skinny. You're looking at the tent pole, stupid. <laughs> I mean, I'm the one over here with the turban on my head. My, but that's a pretty turban. Yes, it was designed by Diana. How do you like that? The new Diana turban. <laughs> Come, Princess. We will help you escape from the swiftest Sultan. Shh. Hey, wait a minute. Someone's coming. Listen. The world will always welcome lovers as time goes by. Who like love songs never are Who is that? That's Humphrey Bogart. He's still walking back from Casablanca. <laughs> please, 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 you must get me out of here. The Sultan is going to tell me as a slave. Don't worry, Princess. We'll help you escape. But it's 500 miles across the desert. Do you have a car? No. Do you have a jeep? No. Well, do you have horses? No, but I got a wagon. <laughs> but who's going to pull the wagon? My little Pekingese dog. Why, how can a little Pekingese dog pull the three of us in a big wagon? We got whips. <laughs> Somebody's coming. Hey, it's the Sultan. At Bay, Ellie Bay. So... I catch you red-handed trying to steal the speed of a princess. Aha! 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 Oh, a double feature. <laughs> hey, Abbott. When I give the ignal say, I'll stay the ice play. You get it? Put out the lights. Yeah, yeah. All right, come on, Costello. I've got the Sultan's horses. Let's go. Okay. Hey, Abbott. Don't look now, but my horse is better. 
Get dummy, turn around in your saddle. Horses, stop! I got those things trained. <laughs> no, we did it, Costello. We escaped from the Sultan and saved the beautiful princess. Now, this is the last scene. You gently lift the princess from her horse. You caress her slowly. Lift her veil. Then, what do you do? Zingo! I'm ready for lunch! <laughs> the orchestra play an old favorite, I get a kick out of you. Thank you. 
Now, here are Bud Abbott and Lou Costello with the final word. Thanks, Ken. Well, Costello, you did a grand job of acting tonight. And your two little daughters, Patty and Carol, and our listeners are going to be mighty proud of you, Lou. Thank you, Abbott. And remember, I was working under a handicap. A handicap? Yes, I have no talent. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Mr. Costello. This is Mrs. Clutch. Hey, Abbott. Clutch just slipped in again. You remember me, the lady whose daughter has the measles? Oh, yeah. Well, we just listened to your show. Is your daughter any better? No. Now I've got the measles. Good night, folks. Good night, everybody. Good night.